So, the interpretation of quantum mechanics. We've all enjoyed the technology that's come out of quantum mechanics for a long, long time. This theory has been with us for an order of 100 years. It was in 1900 sharp that Max Planck came up with the quantum to explain the black body spectrum and then the Bohr atom <coughs> code in 1925 and 1926. Sure. Schrodinger and Heisenberg gave us the m m current mathematical, or Schrodinger in particular gave us the Schrodinger equation and the, the current mathematical formalism. But there's no doubt that there's something very right about this. We use it all the time in our work. But it's also undoubtedly true that there's no consensus on what it really means. Right? Pick out five random physicists and ask them to write down on a piece of paper what quantum mechanics really means and you're not going to get consensus. Even if you find a lot of people who claim to subscribe to the same interpretation of quantum mechanics and you ask them to write down a definition of what they really mean by that, <laughs> we'll often end up with three different sub-interpretations. So just for fun, first of all, I thought uh, I'd ask what you guys think by asking you a few sneaky questions here. First of all, do you believe, so we, quantum computers would be very exciting if we can make them work. Do you believe that new physics that violates the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics is going to make large quantum computers impossible? Yes or no? Who thinks yet that? What, I, what is the question? Again? So the question is whether, so give some background. If the sh quantum computers only work if the Schrodinger equation works. And if the, 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 it's possible, if the Schrodinger equation somehow isn't valid in some circumstances, that could, could potentially lead to quantum computers just not working, even if you could build them. So the question is, do you think that some kind of new physics which violates the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics is going to make them impossible, these computers? Who thinks yes? And the the Hilbert by large, you mean that there exists a sufficiently large size of the Hilbert space so that. Can I yeah, and with all of my questions, you're allowed to make any interpretation of the question. Make any interpretation. Yeah, many. Make under, that, under that condition, I would. Yes. Make, make, any, make any interpretation of any of my questions that you want and then answer that. This is all done in good fun and jest. So, you, who, who thinks yes is going to make things impossible? We have one. Who thinks no? Three, four, five. I and think and, and who didn't vote? I didn't One, two, three, and undecided. Uh, it may make it more possible. Okay. Okay. More possible. Well, uh, uh, let's get the even sneeze. And the answer this is. is uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that at the end. <laughs> what about this one? The quantum uh, do you <laughs> believe? Do you believe that all isolated systems actually obey the Schrodinger equation, or evolve unitarily? As we sometimes say, who thinks yes to this? One, I'll vote yes to that one. Four, five, six. Who's, who's the no? One. And who's, who didn't raise a hand? One, two, three. A decided vote, a steady three. Yeah. All right. So you, um, one question is, do isolated systems exist? So you're not that's a, that's a, again, a very, very reasonable question to ask. So is it it, should we think of our, our everything, for example, as an isolated system, as all of our... Uh, the universe as an isolated system, how could or not? It, how could it become suddenly isolated? Well, if you many, many people would argue that if you take everything that exists, it by definition is isolated because there is nothing out more than it. But but uh, we don't need to get into this just to have a little bit of fun with these questions. Because <laughs> here comes an even more tricky one. So which view of quantum mechanics is closest to your own? Okay. So you're free to interpret any of these in whatever way you want, and just pick, pick the one that makes you feel the most warm and fuzzy. One, Copenhagen interpretation, including the postulate of explicit wave function collapse when you observe something, or <coughs> modified dynamics like Gerard Rubini Weber, for example, for those of you who know what that is, which says that the Schrodinger <coughs> equation is actually not the real equation. There's another one, or the many worlds interpretation. New Everett, where there is no collapse and you have parallel universes, or consistent history interpretation, or the Bohm interpretation, or the modal interpretation, or the none of the above interpretation. So let's see. Who's for Copenhagen right now? Copenhagen. 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 Copenhagen.
Can I choose multiple choices? You can choose one, one. which can be this one. Well, I'll let you vote spread you. You get a total of one vote and spread it out. That's your position. You want to put half on? Put half on Copenhagen. <laughs> okay. And then uh, anyone else? Oh, what about modified, who's for modified dynamics? Anyone? I'm not sure I understand these all, but I'll vote for that one. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what about many worlds? Oh, wow. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, what about... Uh, Oops. What about the moment? What about the consistent histories? What about bone? <coughs> bone interpretation. I thought you had some sympathies for bone. Uh, you should read my essay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a different. Okay, uh, I, I will. It's on my to read list. The modal interpretation. Uh, what is it? If you don't know, you're not going to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> None of the above. That's one, two, one and three, and that's, that's your other half. half. One, two, three, that's four and a half. That's a very popular interpretation. <laughs> uh, just for the fun of it, uh, let me show you uh, okay, one last one. Do you feel that saying, do you feel comfortable saying that these Evrethian parallel universes are actually as real as our universe? Were there being Andre, <laughs> and then I, but, but you voted else? twice, didn't you? Didn't you vote both yeah. many worlds and only the yeah. above? Oh, because, uh, and here I have a split vote. Okay, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who, who, who votes yes in the very last question? Melanie, and, and you voting one half for this, sir? Yeah. Anyone else? I'll vote for that. Too, so that's two and a half. And what about and then? What about no? One, two, three, and, and undecided. One, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Let me just for fun show you. I did the same poll at, at Harvard, at, in the physics department, when I gave a, a talk there uh, back in, in uh, November. And I was actually kind of shocked by, by the way they voted. If you look here. This is the faculty at Harvard? <laughs> it was everybody who came to the talk. No, so this was a colloquium or a... It, it was a it was a seminar that was in the physics department, but there was a lot of people there. There were 42 votes here, you see, and I was kind of stunned. This Copenhagen got zero, and uh, here here we got one half vote for Copenhagen. <laughs>